Okay, uh, hello, I'm Anya Mikarchan and I'm from Finance Group. Uh, my research also focuses on corporate governance and more specifically on the board of directors. So today I will briefly talk about one of the projects which I worked on, which is the, it, ask, uh, it focuses on busy directors and busy boards. So this uh, project is a joint work with Michelle, Lowry, and Lawrence Field, which are, who are both from Penn State. Okay, so um, what uh, this um, issue that we are trying to address in this paper is about busy directors. But first of all, let me tell you who are the busy directors. So the busy directors are directors who serve simultaneously on several boards, okay? So we consider those directors as busy if they serve on three or more boards, okay? So this issue of directors who serve on multiple boards have received a lot of attention both in academic literature and in regular press. So for example, a recent article in Wall Street Journal talks about these uh, busy directors and it highlights some of the challenges of having these guys because if the director serves on multiple boards, then he doesn't have enough time to pay enough attention to each of its companies, okay? For example, it brings an example of a director uh, from New Enterprise Associates who sits on 19 boards. And it argues that if the director is uh, spread out too thinly, then it, doesn't, it cannot, uh, give enough attention to all of his 19 uh, companies. Okay, so uh, consistent with these uh, alleged disadvantages of having these busy directors on the board, many institutional investors were recommending placing some limits on the number of boards that directors can sit on, okay? However, uh, on the other hand, it can be very beneficial of having these busy directors serve on your board. And for example, as one of the CEO of uh, this company, which has a busy board, it says, if you want something to be done, ask a busy person. And the reason for that is that maybe these uh, busy directors, they are more qualified, they are busy, but uh, it means that they have more connections, they are better networked, and they have more experience, okay? And that's why maybe it is really beneficial of having these busy directors, because uh, the fact that they are busy kind of reflects that they are good cold, and that's why they are busy. So what we are going to do in this paper, we are going to focus on young firms, so startup firms, and we are going to see whether it's good for these young firms to have a busy board or not. But uh, first, let me show you how to define a busy board. So usually a board of directors, it would have some, uh, so this is an example, one of uh, firms in our examples, Martha Stewart Living Only Media. So it has two inside directors who are the executives of the firm, and has three outside directors. So the way how uh, is it a busy board or not, the way we are going to define it is we are going to say if the majority of outside directors are busy, then it's a busy board, okay? So what we are going to do is we are going to look at each director, for example, the first one is John Doerr, and see how many boards he sits on. So of course not sits on Marcin, but also he sits on uh, eight other companies. So by our definition, he is a busy director, okay? So the second director on the board is uh, Charlotte Beers, and she sits, of course, on the Martha Stewart's board, but also on three other boards. So she is busy director as well. And the third one, um, who is an IT consultant, so she sits in addition to Martha Stewart's board, she also sits on three other companies' board. So all of the, our outside directors are busy directors, okay? So um, what um, do we know from prior literature about busy boards? So the research, uh, the prior research mainly focused on large established firms and what they found is that it's not good to have busy boards because usually firms which do have these busy boards, they have lower valuations <coughs> and they have weaker profitability. The CEOs in those <coughs> firms are usually paid very highly and their sensitivity of CEO pay is not um, related to the performance, okay? So they have lower sensitivity of CEO pay. So what we are going to do in this paper is that we are going to focus on young firms and we are going to argue that these young firms, they, they, demand, they have different demands from their board of directors than the mature firms. And the argument is that uh, when the firms are young, they are inexperienced and when they just go public, they don't have much experience navigating the public markets. So they don't uh, know how to deal with the institutional investors, with the media, with analysts, or how to file statements with the SEC. So they will rely more on the board of directors for advice. So if they have these uh, busy directors who are by definition more experienced and who have done this before, then it will be very beneficial because they are more networked and they can provide these young companies with connections. Okay? 
At the same time, we also argued that uh, in these uh, younger firms, this uh, need for monitoring from the board is a little bit mitigating by the fact that at the IPO, insiders usually hold a lot of stock, okay? So what do we find is that in fact, 49% uh, of our IPO firms that we have in our sample, they do have a busy board. So this uh, prevalence of um, busy board suggests that firms do consider that having busy directors is beneficial. What we also find that these busy directors, in fact, they are more experienced, they are more qualified, they are better networked, and they also are more committed to their firms. And uh, what's uh, most important when we look at uh, the, whether these busy boards provide any advantages to the firms, we find that yes, firms that have busy boards at IPO, they do trade at a higher, they do have higher market valuations. So we conclude that having busy boards for these young firms is optimal, and that's why we uh, argued that this one-size-fits-all approach doesn't fit everybody, and different firms would place different demands on the boards. And that's why these uh, broad brush recommendations to limit the number of directorships could have ex negative externalities for the young firms. Okay? This is all. Thank you.